uh, principle and looked at what existed in the Westmere family and understood that once we integrate graphics on the same die as the cores, we need to have a lot more bandwidth. Uh, the ring interconnect provides uh, 4x the bandwidth of previous generations from the last little cache. That is giving us performance both for cores, for floating point intensive applications, and giving significant performance to the graphics, which needs a lot of bandwidth. Okay. The other thing that we talked about in the keynotes and mentioned that uh, Dottie mentioned was the Turbo Boost technology. And again, this is the second time around for Turbo Boost technology. Uh, what's different this generation than the prior generation? So uh, we've combined uh, both what I'd call optimizations to really improve the existing turbo boost that existed in Westmere and get more bins of uh, frequency out of that, and a new concept that I'll be talking about later on in the uh, technology sessions of uh, uh, basically being able to give responsiveness uh, for bursts of short period of time, and we're getting a lot of performance out of that in a way that users will actually care about. When they click on something and want something to happen, they're going to get a lot more performance for 10, 20 seconds, and then go back to the regular performance that existed in the previous generation, which is still very good. Okay, great. Now, you guys have been involved in development for probably three or four years since the time we brought Conroe and Marone to market. And, you know, during the time you've been developing, simulating, you got silicon. Uh, what was your experience of your thought process in development versus what you actually saw in silicon? So like you said, we really, especially when we integrated something new like the graphics, we really had to go and do a lot of modeling up front to figure out how to do it, how to do it right. Is the ring the right architecture? How to optimize performance? How to balance power? We have a lot of tools and wrote more tools to do that. And we uh, were happy to see when Silicon came that actually we hit all our targets and actually exceeded quite a few of them as well. So performance is looking uh, even better than we thought it would. Fantastic. Okay, and for Tom, um, you know, we talk about uh, smart visuals. We talk about a visibly smart processor. Uh, I know that's kind of the marketing uh, message here. But if you look at it from your perspective as an architect, you're, you're architecting for media, uh, for manipulating those things. H how did you think about this? And uh, how did you optimize this uh, integration of the graphics onto the processor dot? Uh, many, many different vectors. <clears throat> um, we had started down the media path uh, back about uh, 2002 looking at it and when we came to the unified share model of the programmable graphics engines, we had put a lot of the media functionality within the shader units and optimized the shader units around media, not just 3D. And as we've been evolving the media, uh, we basically have been innovating from a software view and certain things we've been hardening over time into physical hardware. So as a way to get the performance up significantly and the power in, in either down okay, or certainly under control and in many cases much lower power, we've been moving some of those assets into uh, fixed function arenas. Same thing on the 3D side. Uh, in, we might have gotten ahead of the industry, if you will, from a standpoint of programmable graphics and what we did was we looked at all the workloads, made this from just a, a productivity uh, 3D engine to an actual 3D gaming engine and went and looked at the workloads, put in significant fixed function throughputs on certain areas and, and uh, kept that power as well. So in, in the goal to get to 10x by 10, which you saw that we did significantly better, it was also doing it friendly to the form factors, not just consuming a lot of power. So we've kept that power contained as well. Uh, on top of that with the turbo working within the, having the cache, uh, a lot of times we save a lot of DRAM cycles, now we're taking the platform power, instead of going to DRAM or I.O., we can convert it back into uh, graphics or CPU performance. So the uh, graphics shares the cache and utilizes the bandwidth and latency of the cache. In this, in this Absolutely. Okay, great. Now, I'm sure people have questions about the traditional uh, metric uh, in your area of 3D performance, right? So what are the elements that actually allow you to deliver such fantastic 3D performance on this design? Um, oh geez, it's, it's a complex pipeline. So it's things like uh, highly accelerated uh, and compressed forms of Z-buffers that allow like getting, uh, you know, 32x more pixels per clock at, at, at rate. It's, again, utilizing the cache, uh, having that as a backing structure, lowering latency for a lot of the operations for things that spill out of the graphics engine. 
and it's the turbo elements of the system as well. Yeah, fantastic. And then the other thing that we talked a lot about is media. So how do you think about media transcode and how do you architect a processor or the, the graphics unit to uh, handle media? A, a lot of the media works on, uh, on uh, regular block sizes and the key there to get a lot of media acceleration is to be able to, again, the cache just helps, it helps a lot that we can have uh, parallelizing a bunch of the blocks and doing work on multiple of these, uh, these uh, macro blocks. And they all stay contained either in the graphics or certainly in the LLC. And that's what allows us to get a lot of parallelism and a lot of the bandwidth we need without you know, producing the power out the DRAM. So that's helped a lot as well. Okay. And finally, kind of I'd like comments from the three of you. By the way, did you notice that they look differently? These two guys from Hyper are dressed similarly. And this guy from California looks a little bit different, right? But you all had to work together on the same chip, right? So what was that experience this time? I mean, there's a difference when you worked on the Marone project, right? It was a traditional processor core. You had a front side bus. Tom was doing a chipset uh, with the chipset team uh, in Folsom. Now it's a different experience. Maybe you know, share with us, maybe starting with Bob, what was different about the experience this time? designing this 